We're going to look at some passages in John about the light. In John 1, 4, In him was life, and the life was the light of all men. In him was life. It would appear that there's a designation there that only in him was life. What about the rest? Why say in him was life? What about you? Is life in you? And the point is that the life in him was the life in you. The life in him was the light of all men. And so we're being told that there was a him who had found a different life than human beings know. And the life that he had found is the same life that is the light of all others who have not found that life but he had found it for them. In him was life. We know what he did when he walked the earth. We know what that life could perform. And John tells us that same life is the light of you and the light of me, the light of your children, the light of your parents, the light of your ancestors. All are that life which he discovered which was perfect as the Father. Right up there at the beginning of the book of John, the very fourth verse of the first chapter, in him was life, and that life was the light of all men. Quickly then we say, to what degree have I become aware of that life as my life? And right there you see the whole explanation of your human experience. It is either showing forth that life or it is showing forth the darkness or the absence of that life. It is showing forth the light of your being or the absence of that light in your ignorance of it. The light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. And so the mortal sense of self does not comprehend the light of its own being. Mortality does not accept immortality. Material selfhood does not accept spiritual reality. Humanhood does not accept Christhood. This is all by way of a prologue to introduce us to the events to follow. And then in the ninth verse, that was the true light. <clears throat> Which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now, if that's the true, then what isn't that is the false. Whoever is not living that life, which was revealed as the life of all men, perfect as the Father, is not living life itself, but a counterfeit of it. And it is this counterfeit that we call humanhood. Now in the third chapter, 18 to 21, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he believed he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now the light we know by now is Christ. And Christ then is the light of your life. 
And if you have not found the identity called Christ as your own identity, you are not living that life which is revealed as the perfect life of the Father and the only life of the Father. We come right square down to do we or do we not accept that Christ light I am. Now in the acceptance then we find we have to live out of it. We cannot declare it, we must be it. And so at this point the class is dedicated to I Christ the living Son of the living Father. And all of the qualities of God being in Christ, all of the qualities of God are in my being. That was, I think, the major theme of last week's meeting here. And so far, within a very few days, six different people in one way or another communicated with me about some very important changes in their consciousness which manifested either as healings or improvements of some kind but all very important why? because I Christ had in some way taken root in their consciousness as their being It was being taken out of the declaration stage. It was becoming flesh of their flesh. Slowly, they were reaching a Christ consciousness, which is the identity of every individual, whether they know it or not. And as the realization comes, even in a measure, the outer events reflect that consciousness. This is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And so as we live in a material sense of self, we specifically reject Christ's identity because there is no material selfhood in Christ's identity. Human power rejects Christ power. Unless the vision and understanding are there to demonstrate that human power can never attain reality. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. The deeds of Christ in you come from the Father. The infinite directs Christ, expresses Christ, and unless you're living in your Christhood realized, your deeds are not wrought of the infinite, but are finite and transitory. And even though appearing to be powerful, in time they are revealed to be powerless. Now, this is John at this point revealing the mesmerism of the world, which not living in and out of Christhood has never found an answer for the many solution for the many problems it's trying to solve. And we continue looking for solutions in every facet of human endeavor we're looking for solutions. And John is telling us why do you look for solutions when there's only one solution? Don't try to find the cause of this error or that error and then repair the damage 
but find the only cause there is, which is God. And when you're living in the cause that is God, you will discover that all of the effects of this world will reflect that perfect cause and manifest, be manifest in perfection. Whether it's the liver or the heart or any kind of human relationship, if you are in perfect cause, you will be in perfect effect. And the mesmerism is that there is no perfect cause in humanhood. The only perfect cause is made manifest when you're living in Christ. Then instead of seeking solutions, you have the one solution, which is a solution of all, Christ, which receiveth the perfect cause of the Father and expresses it in every degree of your life. And so if you were to translate this into practical daily living, whatever it is, or whatever sequence of things may trouble you at any time, your cause is a false one. The cause of a bad heart, the cause of a bad health, the cause of anything that is wrong is a false cause. It is there because not living in reality, in identity, living instead in a false identity, you are subject to false causes. But living in Christ, aware of the identity of self as Christ, the only cause that can act upon Christ is God. And then one with Christ is one with perfect cause, and that is the repair of the heart or whatever else seems to be in need of repair. Whatever it is then, we do not seek solutions in the plural. We merely stand in the knowledge that I, Christ, being my name, that which is imperfect in appearance, has no cause. And so I'm looking at a causeless effect one that has no ex existence because it wasn't caused by the only cause there is, God. And in Christ you can do this. You can stand in self and know that that which is not caused by God has no cause to sustain it other than the false belief which enables us to step right out of false cause and to watch the dissolution of that which has no cause in God. We do not stand in the darkness. We accept the light of thee. Let's go over to 9.5 in John, which is a little past where we are in the book, at the, in the gospel at the moment. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, whenever you see the word light, spiritual light means Christ identity. The light of the world is the invisible Christ of each individual on the earth. And thus you are living in Christ, you are not in that light. You are not in identity. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Christ in you, as you, is your eternal light. Now, let us move from this point on then with the knowledge that I, Christ, is your name. And instead of looking for solutions to any problem, simply return to that knowledge that I, Christ, is my name. And don't bother to go any further. You will be imbued from perfect, infinite cause. 
which is ever functioning in I Christ and you will watch the miracle of infinite grace through true identity dissolve diminish remove correct and ultimately lead you into the divine image and likeness of your true being I'm emphasizing that purposely so you won't waste time, effort, and thought to seek solutions to anything. It's the wrong level. Anything you might want to solve is already perfect in Christ. I, the light of the world, Christ in you, have overcome the world. Come unto me. Don't go out there solving all these things. You just run in circles. But when you stand in high Christ, you will discover solutions to these things that are the right solutions. Because where that which needed solution appears, the invisible Christ will manifest divine qualities instead. Those divine qualities will show forth as a solution. I am the light of the world. And the moment you touch the light of your being, you're touching the light of the world. Do you see the secret of grace there? When you touch the light of your being, you're touching the light of the world. Where are the things you sought solutions for? They're in the world. But when you touch the light of your being, you're touching the light behind the entire world. You're touching the infinite invisible. And it must come forth through the light of your being manifesting as solutions, added things. You're later going to see that Jesus spoke in the treasury. That treasury that he spoke in is infinite consciousness. Why was he in infinite consciousness? Because he was Christ. When you are in the light of your being, you are Christ. And you are speaking from the treasury. So that whatever seems to be missing out there is supplied by the treasury, the infinite consciousness which functions in the light of your being. You see now, we're not going outside for solutions. We're going inside. And inside always means I, Christ. Let's go over to 1235. We're still in John. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Now, walking in darkness means being a human being, a mortal being. But yet a little while is the light with you. The light remains with you during your mortal period. And in this mortal period, you're unaware or aware of the light. Translated, unless you become aware of the light of your being before matter dies. You've missed the point of the Christ message. The Christ message is know me while I am still in the world. No Christ in you as identity before the death or corruption of the human form. When you know the light of God in you before the corruption of the human form, you've discovered the meaning of rebirth. 
of regeneration, of transition, of peace without end, of life without death. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of the light. Now you could go on ten or twenty years not accepting yourself to be the light of God and you would find then that this verse at that time would suddenly be for you a tragedy because here it is right now it says you are the light believe in it why wait ten or twenty years while you still have the light be it Now, here's something which fits this at this point. You remember in the chapter of your being, we touched on this. I'd like you to see it again. The secret of the infinite way is revealed in the truth that the only God there is is consciousness. The only God there is is consciousness. And since God is the one consciousness, this is the consciousness of individual man. Therefore, the consciousness of individual man is his creator, maintainer, and sustainer. Out of the consciousness of individual man must come all that is necessary for his fulfillment. Now, there's a little trick to that phrase there. God is consciousness. And then later learning that God is your individual consciousness. And the trick is that Joel is telling you that God is your consciousness. But it's a double statement. Turn it around and you'll see your consciousness is God. Every individual's consciousness is the God he worships. Because that's what determines his experience. Your consciousness determines your experience. But suppose your consciousness is not conscious of the light. Then your individual experience does not show forth the light of which you are unconscious. And then your God is the God of this world. Your limited consciousness. Now God is your individual consciousness. Means that the infinite father is your individual consciousness when you have come into the light of your being. Only when you've accepted Christ as your name. God is your consciousness, but it doesn't do you a bit of good until I, Christ, is your identity, accepted. And so we have here a world of men and women living in a human finite consciousness unaware of the infinite consciousness of spirit. And that's a division. That division is responsible for the errors of the world. In the absence of oneness, in the presence of division, we have no light. And the absence of that light shows forth as the evils that we experience. For instance, you can skyjack a plane in, in the sky, but you thought it was God's sky at one time. How can a skyjacker work in God's sky? You can rob a bank on the ground, but it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. How can you rob a bank? How can the million and one things that do happen, happen except that each individual involved is living in a human consciousness devoid of the knowledge that I am the Christ, the light of God. You sit in that plane up there and see if it's skyjacked. See if in the presence of the knowledge of I, Christ, there can be 
evil in your life. It's impossible. Whether you're on the ground or in the sea or in the air, in the presence of I, Christ, in your consciousness, as the identity of you, and each one around you, you find you're under God government. When your human consciousness is dissolved and you are conscious that I, Christ, is your name, isn't that Christ consciousness? And doesn't Christ go to the Father? Doesn't that mean that Christ is one with God? And therefore the infinite functioning through the Christ of you of which you are conscious then means what Joel says that God is your individual consciousness. And because God is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent all these qualities are functioning as your individual consciousness when you are able to stand in the knowledge that I, Christ, is my name, identity, my being. The whole infinite line of truth is functioning actively as the law of divine power, divine sustenance. And there's nothing for you to do. You need no solutions to anything because you're in perfect cause cause that must manifest as perfect effect now then if this is the secret of the infinite way and you know the secret of the infinite way you're seeing that the first parts of John here the emphasis on the light and the infinite way emphasis upon correct identity in order to be the living consciousness of God are really one and the same So that takes us into John 8, which is where we're going to begin today, in the 12th verse. The adulteress had not been condemned because I, Christ, standing as Jesus Christ, can only see I, Christ, where the world sees material flesh. Now then, you, identifying as I, Christ, must accept I, Christ, as the identity of all those around you. You cannot say I, Christ, here, but you devil there. There is no such thing. And so the minute you are not accepting I, Christ, In everyone, regardless of the appearance that stands before you as their only name, their only identity, their only being, you are rejecting I, Christ, as your being. When you are in I, Christ, you will accept I, Christ, everywhere. Now, this is all unknown to the human mind, to the human intelligence, symbolized by the Pharisee. And then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I, Christ, is the voice that speaks there saying, I am the light of the world. But I, Christ, is the name of you. I, Christ, speaking there, is the I, Christ, in you which is saying, I am the light of the world. Not of you alone, but of the world. He that followeth me will not walk in darkness, and therefore... To accept true identity, you must say, I, Christ, is my name, and I, Christ, is the light of the world. I, Christ, is the light of everyone I know. I, Christ, is the light of all my ancestors 
all those who will follow me. I, Christ, is the only identity that I, Christ, can acknowledge. There is the secret of Jesus Christ, that I, Christ, standing there as him, only acknowledges I, Christ, everywhere. Seeking no solutions, because I, Christ, everywhere is perfect. And there is no other there. I Christ in you seeks no solutions because I Christ in you is the I Christ everywhere and there is no other. You stand in infinite I Christ. I Christ of you is one with the Father who is all and there is no other. The moment you start seeking a solution, you are declaring the impotence of God, the imperfection of God, the absence of God. You are declaring mortality as your name. You are declaring darkness as the only experience you are going through, instead of light. Now, this is really simple, isn't it? The only problem with it is that you have to do it. The understanding is simple. I am the light of the world, and that is your name. And here it is being pronounced for you as your name. Now, if we were to do nothing else but know that I am the light of the world, we would discover that all forms of evil that come into our understanding on a human level would be dissolved by the light of our own being. You could never say, I lack. The moment a lack would appear, you would know that somehow or other you had left the knowledge that I, Christ, am the light of the world. You might have an ache or a pain somewhere, but the moment that happened, you would know that I, Christ, am the light of the world. And the light of the world expresses only the qualities of God. You would catch the auto-suggestion of evil instantly. World mesmerism wouldn't have a place to go in you. It cannot function in the light. It can only function in the dark. As you dwell with this, you find there's a conflict takes place in you because you wondered what to do with that other fellow who says, well, if I accept this light, what happens to me? Where do I go? What do I do? I had all these plans. But this light, if I have to stay in it, what about the me that was going to Florida next year or the me that was going to build his house or the me that was going to build his business or the me that was going to do this and that and the other thing can I be the light and do these things too and the conflict is set up we want to give up the things we don't want but we don't want to give up the things we do want and so we're willing to take sort of a, a half a light a light for the things we want to get rid of, but I don't want to take the light as a substitute for the things that I have wanted. That's like saying I believe in half a God. Now this surrender then has to be to the total light of your being. Nothing held out. No personal plans still remaining. The unborn baby, when it's born, doesn't stay in the womb. It comes out. As you come into the light, spiritual being, you don't try to cling to your mortal plans.
you let the light activate itself as whatever is to be done. It may have a much bigger house than you planned or a more beautiful house than you planned or a different kind of business than you planned or a different trip than you planned. Whatever the light has in itself will manifest as the perfect action. That trip will be ordained, that house, that business, that activity will be ordained by the light of your being. The Father will build that house. And that's why it's so important not to make the mistake of going out on our own mortal plans because the light of your being is the only cause. Any other cause is a false cause. You're inventing a second creator where none is possible. The rain can wash that away. Now, this is important then. I am the light of the world. The government of the United States could be planning something right now. We don't know if it's good or bad, but we know it's human. We know it's a mortal plan. What about Christ? What does Christ's identity say? I am the cause. I am the light. Suppose we turn the problem over to Christ within. What would be the solution? Would it not be automatically a perfect solution? Do you see that every plan, every problem, every solution from a mortal sense of life has always run afoul of the fact that it's only based on the mortal knowledge we possess. It's based on finite knowledge. It isn't based on divine purpose, on infinite knowledge. It cannot be right. Even when it appears right, it's wrong. The only right is spiritual righteousness. Every decision must come from the inner Christ of your being. Every activity must flow from the inner Christ of your being. And then you never have to look back and wonder, will it work? Is it right? Am I protected? If it's a Christ action, it's under God ordination. Now, life built that way is a divine life, expressing Now then, here, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness is the key. That as you live in Christ, knowing that Christ is infinite expression, individualized, perfect in every way, containing every divine quality, you truly are in the treasury of the Father. You're out of livers and lungs and hearts and you're out of bank accounts. You're out of securities. You're out of investments. You're out of speculation. You have it all. The infinite treasury of the light of God. And all of these things become so much of the background that they're never in the foreground at all. New things take their place. Things like learning to live in the invisible kingdom of God, where there are no physical houses, no physical people, no physical actions. Learning to live in your new home before the dissolution of the material body. This becomes much more important than the limited mortal plans of the human mind. And while you're doing that, strangely enough, all of your human things are under divine law anyway. The inner Christ has a thousand eyes, a thousand hands, 
a thousand ways of moving in the divine rhythm of the Father. Now it should be clear that revealed here is the divinity of your being. I, in the midst of you, am the light called Christ. And I speak it not to you or you or you, I speak it to mankind. And therefore wherever you or you or you hear it, know it is the truth of mankind. I, in the midst of mankind, am the light of the world. That I, in the midst of mankind, is you. It isn't saying that that I, in the midst of mankind, is also in you. It's saying that the I, in the midst of mankind, is you. You cannot accept Christ's identity where you stand alone. It isn't true. The I in the midst of all is your name. And that's true of each individual. I, Christ, everywhere must be your living name in your consciousness so that you're not favoring the form that bears your human name or the possessions that bear your human name. That is a great error. The minute you favor the you or the friend or the loved one or the child or the mother, you're stepping out of I, Christ, everywhere is my name. You can never make God partial. The impartiality of spirit must be defended with integrity. Only the Father knows what is right. No human mind can make that decision for God. We live in the impersonal everywhere I Christ. And then we're not trying to send a little of I, Christ, to that one who happens to be my daughter or granddaughter or my large brother. You see the impartiality that must be maintained or else you're out of it. Now we have to come to another place where we're not irritated by the endless irritations of the world because they're all signs of living outside of our name. <coughs> there are so many little irritations that pop up and they're all signs to you that wherever the source of irritation is coming from has not been accepted by you as I Christ right there. That I Christ where the irritation is coming from is yourself. And if you don't hear it today, you'll hear it next week. And if you don't hear it next week, you'll hear it next year. Because someday you're going to see that yourself is the only self there is. I am the light of the world. This is the revelation of the one self. There is no other. You must be the self of the world, for there is no other. And so there is no one that you can say irritates you, because there is no such being. The only being there is, is your own self, and if you want to irritate yourself, that's your privilege. But it isn't true. You can't rob from yourself. You can't hate yourself. You can't condemn yourself. You see that? You've got to come above the separated individuals that appear to the human eyes and see that only myself is everywhere. And it is the light, the Christ of the world. 
Why do we work at this so strenuously? Because we must live in the light while we are still in this world. Later, there's no time to work in the light. And so right here, breaking into human consciousness is the Christ saying, I am the light of the world, which is the revelation to you of your identity. The light of the world, the one invisible self is your identity. Now watch how every word spoken here then is your identity speaking. Wherever you see I saying something, you should quickly know this means I, Christ, myself, says the following. For this is revealing a quality of your being. And each of these qualities of your being, when not accepted, represent your rejection of your own being. This is how we learn what we are. By I, Christ, speaking through Jesus to reveal us the qualities of the light of the world that we are. Can you feel that inversion from humanhood as something new is growing out of us? Just as a tree grows out of the seed, I, Christ, is growing out into our consciousness from this human shell. And now I, Christ, walks the earth in your consciousness, as your consciousness, one with the Father, and God becomes revealed to you as your individual consciousness functioning through I, Christ, the light of the world. To the Pharisees, this is a man talking. To you and I, it must be I, the Christ of our own being, our infinite Christhood, our one indivisible self, revealing itself. the human consciousness to take us out of the mesmerism of the world which in this particular case has a Roman Empire holding men in bondage bring it up to date we're still in the same bondage in bondage to passions in bondage to ambitions in bondage to the senses in bondage to matter in bondage to the dying sense of self It makes no difference if it's a Roman Empire or an aching heart. They're both forms of bondage. But I, the light, takes us out of bondage to matter. Bondage to the human limited mind. Bondage to a changing life that must end. I, Christ, lifts us into reality without end. Into the consciousness of the isness of God where we stand. We look at the Pharisees. They say, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Now this is religion talking. Religion says to Jesus at this point, Thou bearest record of thyself. In other words, this is the place where Religion personalizes Jesus. <coughs> You're only a man. Who are you to talk like that? But I'm not a man. I'm the light of the world. I just told you I'm not a man. All those miracles you saw and others you will see are performed by the light of the world, not by a man. And I'm not bearing record of a person called Jesus. Jesus answered and said, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came, 
and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Whence I came. Life of God expresses as the light of the world. That's not the physical light you see shining out of the sun. It's the light that was there before the sun was. Now then, he is revealing here the very substance of the book we're studying. I know whence I came and whither I go. He's revealing that I, the light of the world, am one with the infinite Father. That's where I came from. God expresses as the light of the world. And whence I go, the light of the world returns to the Father. The realization of one infinite being. And so, really, the light of the world although it appears to be speaking to Pharisees, isn't there. The Pharisees aren't there to the light. The light is there right where the Pharisees are. The Pharisees are but a concept. Every human you look at should become to you nothing but an externalized state of consciousness. That's all a Pharisee was. That's all a person is, an externalized state of consciousness. What is there is I, the light of the world. And through the glass darkness, dark, darkly of human consciousness, a person appears where I, the light of the world, am. So we look from our own inner self and we know that even though persons appear, right there is I, the light of the world. And that I, the light of the world, is your name. Are you going to accept your invisible self there or an externalized state of consciousness called a person? Your experience will be determined by whether you are accepting I, the infinite light, or the visible material self. It won't be what you say, what you affirm. It'll be what your consciousness is. And so this has to be worked with. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. The mortal mind of a mortal being sees flesh. That's an adulteress. That's a thief. That's an important person, a VIP. And that one over there is a skyjacker. But I, the invisible Christ, judge no man because I, Christ, know only my infinite self. Now I ask you, when you hear a bird chirp, is that what you're saying, how pretty that sounds? Or are you knowing I, Christ, is the identity there? And that identity which you're calling bird is your invisible self. I know this sounds very strange until you have had the experience of it. But there is no place where your invisible self is not. It doesn't matter if a tree grows there or a weed. A likable person or an unlikable one. A tiger or a giraffe. Only I, Christ, is there. Daniel in the lion's den was a demonstration of that. Every healing in all of the spiritual work you do is a demonstration of I, Christ, is all that is there. Turning the tidal wave, 
turning the windstorm, changing the weather, releasing the power of I Christ anywhere is the recognition of the one cause as the one self and the one being. For those of you who are having difficulty understanding that you are an infinite being named Christ, I refer you back to 8.12 of John and I ask you to look at it, meditate upon it, and know that it's speaking of your infinite self. 8.12, I am the light of the world. That's why we must let light be, let there be light as your consciousness. Yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. Just in one place, I judge no man, and then, yet, if I judge. And if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone. Now, there are different types of judgment. In one case, judgment means condemnation. In another, it means to judge from the standpoint of love. to judge spiritual consciousness, to judge the degree of spiritual consciousness attained. The eye of your being knows the degree of spiritual consciousness in which you are. The judgment is an automatic one. It isn't done by human thought. Either you are I, or you are I am not. And if you are I am not, you've made the judgment. The eye just stands there waiting for you to return. Now, doesn't all this add up to release man? If you accept Christ, are you not releasing man? And what man are you releasing? Mankind. You're releasing your individual concept of self as mortal being... That's the man you're releasing. But because I am the Christ of the world, you're releasing mankind everywhere in your consciousness. It doesn't exist for you. It's an externalized effect of the false consciousness separated from the Father. However strange it seems at first, the fruitage is so overpowering in so many ways that we welcome the strangeness. And we realize that it should sound strange. If it didn't, we would just be doing what we did yesterday. The strangeness is a sign of the newness, of the progression. And always there is new strangeness as you progress spiritually because you're using unused muscles. You're moving into unknown areas. You're extending your consciousness into the unknown which has ever been present waiting to be known. The strangeness is of short duration. Soon the world around you is more strange than the new consciousness you're developing. Soon to you, the world of evil is a stranger. The world of error, the world of bondage, the world of lack, the world of limitation, fear and doubt, to these you become a stranger. Why? 
They're not in the light of the world. That's where your consciousness remains. You learn to release man, mankind, and the world, and to you the kingdom of God on earth becomes more and more a living reality in which you actually walk consciously. You experience the activity of God on earth. always knowing that even now this is a new beginning and you're always in a new beginning the light of your own beginning being is the new beginning ever manifesting you're letting light enter your consciousness as identity and the world is shown to be a state of darkness We'll rest in the meditation for a moment. <clears throat> 